On April 14, we left home for a two-day visit to Key West. Of course, we had to drive down US Route 1, the only highway into the Florida Keys, and a great way to experience the beauty of the surrounding waters and local color. After the 18-mile stretch, the area of transitional wetlands where the Florida Everglades, Florida Bay, and the Atlantic Ocean meet, we stopped in Key Largo to stretch our legs and get something to drink. The Florida Keys consist of a chain of islands connected by 42 bridges that begin at the southern border of Miami-Dade County and extends more than 126 miles to the southernmost point in the continental United States, Key West, our destination. One of the attractions along US Route 1 is the Seven Mile Bridge that connects the Middle Keys to the Lower Keys. US Route 1, also known as the Overseas Highway, ends at mile marker zero, which is located on Truman and White Street in Key West. By 2 in the afternoon, we made it to Key West, and we stopped at a local McDonald's located on the Overseas Heritage Trail with ocean views for a bite to eat. to find our motel, the best western hibiscus, located just one block away from the famous Duval Street, and where spacious rooms and free Wi-Fi were included. While Greta and Kurt enjoyed a dip in the nice swimming pool and oven-napped, I ventured out for a walk around the neighborhood, where I was able to capture nice pictures of the different landmark buildings. The Basilica of St. Mary Star of the Sea, established in 1851, is one of the oldest Catholic parishes in the state of Florida and the oldest parish in the Archdiocese of Miami. The original building was destroyed by a fire in 1901 and the current church building dates from 1905. Historic marker, Porter's anti-pirate fleet, 
An outbreak of piracy in 1822 prompted the United States to organize the West Indian Squadron, an anti-pirate fleet. For two years, the fleet attacked many of the estimated 2,000 pirates in the Indies. Altogether, 79 pirates were taken by U.S. ships. The Garo Cigar Factory was constructed by Eduardo H. Garo in 1916. This neoclassical revival was constructed after an earlier wood frame factory on this site had burned. It was one of the earliest American integrated workplaces where Cubans, African, and Bahamian Americans and whites worked side by side while their children attended the same school. Small cottages were built near the factory to house workers and became an area known as Gattoville. The building is now home to Monroe County offices, the Cigar Museum, and the Florida State Health Department. At the southernmost point of continental USA, only 90 miles away from Cuba. Of course, we had to stand in line for the opportunity to have our pictures taken next to this iconic marker. some information about the statue of Bishop Albert Key, who along with three generations of his family and numerous individuals from Bahama Village stood on this corner selling fresh conch, fish and conch shells for more than half a century. He was renowned for blowing his conch shell and waving a hearty welcome to tourist trains and visitors from all around the world. He is recognized for having greeted an estimated 11 million visitors to this little piece of paradise. Probably the most photographed inhabitants of Key West are the multicolored strutting crowing roosters seen all over town. Most of the roosters, hens, and their offspring are wild, but are a routine sight and sound on streets and backyards of the island. As we walked toward the famous Duval Street, we passed by Ernst Hemingway Home, which was already closed for the day. Following are pictures of some of the interesting buildings along Duval Street. The Strand was once a movie theater that sat over 800 people. Now it's a Walgreens drug store. The San Carlos is a historic landmark. It was founded in 1871 by Cuban exiles of Key West as an educational, civic, and patriotic center. Today it serves as a museum, library, art gallery, theater, and school. St. Paul's Episcopal Church with 19th century history. The present church, 1912, is the fourth on this site. Built about 1838 and moved to this location after the hurricane of 1846, the Patterson Baldwin House is believed to be one of the oldest buildings in Key West. 
The Martin Hellings House, constructed circa 1892, is one of only a few historic houses in Key West not built of wood. The Key West Women's Club, established in 1915, purchased the building in 1940. Sloppy Joe's Bar is a historic American bar, founded in 1933. The bar's most famous patrons were Ernst Hemingway and the infamous rum runner Havana Joe. The old city hall building topped by the clock tower now houses the Chamber of Commerce and the Visitors Center. Then it was time for the Key West Sunset Celebration at Mallory Square Dock. Each night around two hours before sunset, masses of people, both locals and tourists alike, flock to the water's edge to experience a multicultural happening and to watch the sun sink into the Gulf of Mexico. It was time to go back to the motel for a much needed rest. The Audubon House dates from 1830. In 1960, the house was restored and dedicated as a public museum to be named the Audubon House commemorating artist James Audubon's visit to Key West in 1832. Originally built in the early 1840s, this house was purchased at the turn of the century by William I. Delaney, who erected the magnificent residence that stands here today. This stately home was constructed of Virgin Day County Pine, in 1872 by Captain Philip Cosgrove. The Cosgrove family resided here until 1947. This is the main gate to the Truman Annex, both a neighborhood and military installation in Key West, where the Winter White House for President Harry Truman is located. 
built in 1890 as quarters for Navy officers, the Little White House later was used by American Presidents William Howard Taft, Harry S. Truman, Dwight Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Jimmy Carter, and Bill Clinton. Truman used the facility as a vacation home and functioning White House between 1946 and 1952. The Key West Custom House and Old Post Office Building was designed by architect William Carr and was completed in 1891. The Custom House currently serves as the Key West Museum of Art and History. J. Seward Johnson, Jr., born 1930, is an American artist known for his trompe l'oeil painted bronze statues. He is a grandson of Robert Wood Johnson I, co-founder of Johnson & Johnson. He is best known for his life-size bronze statues, which actually are castings of living people of all ages, depicting them engaged in day-to-day -day activities. A large staff of technicians perform the fabrications. The U.S. Coast Guard Headquarters Key West Station is a historic site, and it is architecturally unique. It achieved major significance between 1850 and 1874 as a military base. The Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Museum contains an extensive collection of artifacts from 17th century shipwrecks, such as the Henrietta Marie, Nuestra Señora de Atocha, and Santa Margarita. The museum is named for founder Mel Fisher. <laughs> Located in front of the Waterfront Playhouse in Mallory Square, the Sculpture Garden opened in 1997. It features 36 magnificently cast bronze busts of the men and women who have had the greatest impact on Key West. The magnificent sculpture of the records by Miami sculptor James Mastin captures the spirit of Key West as a bold, boisterous, and bustling sea town out of the frontier of young America. The early records are depicted engaging in their work of saving lives and cargo from a vessel come to ultimate peril on the reef. Wrecking was the island's first economy and the reason for her early existence. In fact, Key West became the richest city per capita in the U.S. during the mid-1800s, due to the salvage fees received by the wrecking captains and crews, and ultimately the businessmen, lawyers, clerks, packers, dock hands, and insurance agents ashore. The historical military memorial consists of 10 stations, nine of which offer historical information regarding different military actions in which Key West or the Florida Keys played a major role. It starts with the anti-piracy campaign in 1823 and ends with the drug war which is still being fought here today. Also on display is a refurbished gun turret salvaged from the battleship Maine, 
which departed from Key West before entering Havana Harbor, where it was sunk, marking the start of the Spanish-American War. The military memorial is located on the Mallory Square Esplanade that overlooks the ocean, where locals and tourists gather for the most spectacular sunsets to be found anywhere. Mallory Square has always been the hub of Key West's social and commercial life from the time of the city's beginning in the early 1820s. Fast forward a century and a half and you will find that Mallory Square is still the center of Key West with restaurants, shops, theater, museums, live entertainment and more. I was strumming my six string, but the melody didn't have no ring. So I, I called a friend of mine for some advice. Yeah, we drank a little rum. He said, play me your conundrum, chum. You know, I wrote a song or three, once or twice. I said, it's all about the islands and the way they make you feel. He said, man, you're too hard trying You just got to keep it real And if you want to dance to it Add a little romance to it Then you clap your hands to it Hey, hey, take it from me And put a little sweat A little reggae A little Hemingway And it sing it in a Florida key Yeah, man, no worries. You just had it in the wrong key. You got to put it in a Florida key. Now when you hear that sweet key sound, you're already island bound, drifting on a sailboat on the blue. And you're rocking with your babe, gently with the waves, sailing that silver highway. To the moon While the stars around are falling Out across the sea The ocean song is calling And it's in a Florida key And if you want to dance to it Add a little romance to it Then you clap your hands to it Hey, hey, take it from me And put a little sway in it A little reggae to Hemingway and it, sing it in a Florida key. Yeah, if you want to dance to it, add a little romance to it. Then you clap your hands to it, hey, hey, take it from me. And put a little sway in it, a little reggae in it, a little Hemingway in it, sing it in a Florida key. 
key. Yeah, if there's Hemingway in, swing it in, swing it in, bring it in, sing it in the Florida key. Yeah, man, now you're cooking. That's the perfect recipe. Now you're singing in the Florida key. Yeah. Hey, speaking of recipes, you still got that old blender? Got any lime juice and any of that rum still laying around? We'll crank it up, shall we? Now you're singing in a Florida key. 